Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of UHS Presents. I'm your host, Sarah, and tonight, Lori is not coming, and I'm not going to tell you why, because it's none of your business, but um, we got people here, so don't you worry. I do want to quickly tell you what's going on with um, the news review for UHS. We got, let's see, we got uh, the surgeon almost done. It's like 75% colored, so you'll be getting updates on that soon if you haven't already. Um, what else? Uh, Stan's books. They're printed and they are on their way as we speak to Lori. So they will be coming to you within the next few weeks, I suppose. Uh, assuming she has all the other crap that she needs to send to you for the rewards, you know. And, um, oh yeah, The Sundering is premiering tomorrow. Come to, uh, our special live stream here, let me just put this little thingy up here for you. I'll show you again in a minute, or at the end of the show, or whatever. But um, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to be having a live stream launch party as per the usual. And I know Hannibal Taboo is coming, and uh, we'll see who else is going to show up because uh, it might be there might be a ton of people. We don't know yet. You know, it's just a thing. So. With that out of the way, let's just go ahead and bring on uh, the guy I know y'all are here to see. That's Matt, the malignant mastodon. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, you just, you saw nothing. <laughs> just going to casually put Miss Namikawa back here. I'm going to put Kong here and pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> Wait, who's the blue one that's right in the front there? Uh, this I, is, uh, I'm pointing so, at it with my cursor like you can see that. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> this kaiju's name, I'm kidding, not kidding you, his name is Hope. And, uh, um, this is the monster from the Japanese film, uh, What to, what to Do with a Dead Kaiju. He spends the entire movie dead. <laughs> and, um, uh, they made, uh, th this movie came out, like, I think earlier this year. And um, my buddy uh, Shinichi Wakasa, uh, his studio made the prop for the big dead monster. And this is a soft vinyl toy of the monster. And I did, a, I even did the little, I did a little art for the header card that it came with. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, he's adorable. So, Look mean, at he's, him. Yeah, he's cute. That's why I saw, I, I didn't, like, when you pulled it back so that I could see his whole body, like, it's even cuter. But, like, I thought his head was cute. And I was like, yeah, what's, who's that? Aww. Yeah. That's kind and of got so that. It's a, it's a very retro soft vinyl style that they, that, that that's really popular with a specific kind of collectors. Like, there's, there are people who only collect sof, sofubi like this. And, um, yeah, this, uh, this was done by the people. Was this Amichigo? Yeah, this was Amichigo. Uh, they're uh, the really cool toy makers in Japan. I know the company owners. They're really cool too. Not just gonna sit here awesome. keep name dropping stuff the whole episode, but <laughs> I mean, we could probably make a whole episode out of that. Probably. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, I've, I've um, actually had. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, Sarah, Sarah underscore G. Tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Um, says they they made or asks they made a kai they made a toy from what to do with the dead kaiju and apparently yep. yes <laughs> they made two uh, two or three actually they uh, they made little capsule toys as well that uh, uh, of the little dead kaiju dude and stuff that that movie had a pretty big release in Japan I don't know how well I, I assume it did okay uh, financially but it uh, I really hope it gets released here in the states I I was sent a review copy. Uh, by Shochiku, the company that that distributes it, because they wanted like English language speaking people to react to it, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. And I watched it. Um, actually, wound up watching it with Kasten, and we had a really good time with it. It's like a a parody of a particular Godzilla movie. It's a it's a post COVID kaiju movie is the best way to describe it. Like a like a pandemic era kaiju movie. So it, it's really something. It's very interesting, <laughs> very fun. It sounds interesting. I you know. I've my experience with uh, kaiju movies is pretty much what you've been this having show? us watch for the show. Plus, <laughs> like I watched the '97 Godzilla. That's what started this whole Matt's Monster Mondays, wasn't it? Uh, was that I was like, hey, do you want to come talk about '97 Godzilla with us? <laughs> 
Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's one of those things where it's like you hear, you hear it and you, you want to correct, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. But eh. uh, it's the 98 Godzilla. <laughs> but that's it's my it's okay. head. It's okay. Um, well, it's really... I probably got that off of Wikipedia or something anyway. So, you know, it was and probably we... wrong. And then I just committed that part to memory without. Yeah. You know, it's it's really OK. You don't live and breathe this stuff like I do. This is not this stuff is literally my job. Like, it's not just my job. It's I had an old girlfriend who once described it as you don't just like this stuff. You believe in it. And I'm like, yeah, that's accurate. It's a fanatical religion thing at this point. <laughs> so uh, fair. But yeah, but yeah, um, that's. I just meant to say that I watched the, you know, the Matthew Broderick one that. versus the ones that, yeah, like that's. I just really wanted to discern that is that I had not seen any Godzilla movies, but that one, which, yeah. and then after that and like uh, doing a little research after you know just out of curiosity when we had started to talk about it more, I I was very um, like there's a whole there's a whole like thing about people who are pissed off about that one specifically because it looks more like a like a dinosaur kind of lizardy uh, you know it's, it's just because it looks different it's got a longer neck and like there's people are mad about that apparently hold on hold on <laughs> getting up oh, let's see here we go no wait not that one uh just just give me a second i have to find <laughs> i have to find where i put them all cuz i recently rearranged and uh no not that that's too small okay here we go Okay. Okay. All right. So we will eventually, I'm sure, do uh, the 98 Godzilla for this well, show. Eventually like, we're going to run out of movies, right? We'll have to. <laughs> it might take us decades, but... but I was going to say, it'll be a while. <laughs> um, okay, so you have kind of your traditional Godzilla. Uh, very upright. Uh, it, it's a man in a suit. It's an actor in a suit. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's very classic Tyrannosaurus, like that sort of old school dragging the tail, Tower of Power, whatever you want to call it. And then you've got the 1998 Godzilla, which is a, a pretty drastic redesign. Like when you get him up close like that, with like seeing the whole body there, he almost looks alien, like 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 alien from Alien. Almost. Yeah. He's a, so, I mean, the big thing that, that, uh, so it was designed by Patrick Totopoulos, who's an amazing, uh, t t might have been an inspiration for a particular character from a UHS comic that uh, y'all might have heard of. Um, hey, I was just going to say that that uh, name is familiar. Sounds familiar. So the 98 Godzilla, uh, you know, like I said, Patrick Totopoulos designed it and, and Totopoulos is, a, is an amazing designer. Like he's a great artist and he's done some really cool uh, production design in Hollywood for years and honestly it's legitimately a really interesting looking creature it's a it's a really nice design mm -hmm. and with some mild tweaks it could be a Godzilla and uh, there was even an animated series that came after the movie where they just made it more like Godzilla and that all worked but the it was so different and such a departure that not just in look, but in behavior. Like we've seen, we watch GMK. You know, you know that you've seen what the Japanese Godzilla is supposed to be like. It's a, right. it's a rampaging beast. It just, you know, like like Jason Voorhees practically. Um, just a, just a, a a force of nature. You know, uh, uh, and the this version of Godzilla was the thing that made people really upset was that he didn't act like Godzilla. Uh, mm, he was running okay. and hiding through most of the movie, uh, trying to lay eggs, uh, trying to avoid fighting the military. And it's just, it, it, and it was very clear that the production team or specifically the director, writer and director just didn't really give a shit about making a Godzilla movie. They wanted to make a, they wanted to make like a monster movie and they just didn't really care how much it resembled Godzilla. Sure. And they were saying stuff like, well, it's not realistic for this giant creature to fight the military. And it's like, it's not realistic I don't for it. That's, who, <laughs> nobody watches these movies. Nobody watches these movies because they're realistic. The You can have something that's a little more believable, but I don't know. I mean, we'll talk about, we'll get to the 98 Godzilla. Oh, we'll get to it. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sarah said, oh, Roland Emmerich hated old school Godzilla. I remember reading a lot about Roland Emmerich's feelings and people's feelings about Roland Emmerich as well. <laughs> well, there's this attitude, there was this attitude, especially between Emmerich and, and Dean Devlin, who was the producer and co-writer. There was this attitude that the Japanese movies, there was, the reason people even remembered them or liked them was because they were these stupid uh, cheesy monster movies that nobody actually, I'm going to lower myself a little bit. Nobody actually took seriously that nobody actually mm -hmm. liked. They liked them because they were stupid and that mm -hmm. there was this elitist, like we're Hollywood. So no matter what we do, it's her attitude, which I think a lot of people were like, that's stupid. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, quickly switching to a different subject. Uh, yeah. I wanted to kind of update people a little bit because uh, I didn't talk about it a whole lot on social media. We were going to talk about a particular monster movie tonight. Uh, right. But we yes. Had to change those plans a little bit because a bunch of people got sick and uh, or like half of our viewing group got sick. Um, and uh, and not just not just that, but like uh, just just the timing just didn't work out. So. Mm um we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna try again later to watch how from beyond the fog uh yeah we're definitely gonna do that that is that is going to happen it's just that we had to put it off because of you know unforeseen circumstances shenanigannaries like you know not just not, not so much just ailment but just like scheduling and stuff and just mm. you know so Everything. we're gonna try again we'll try again and 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 um stuff happens so this is kind of episode 2.5 of uh matt's monster mondays yeah. and yeah and i uh what i did so matt said he he's, he's obviously still down to come do the show with us and uh since i uh since we were not going to cover the movie i thought you know what why don't we quiz matt on kaiju mm, how's this getting up poorly so <laughs> So yeah, that's uh that's what I think we're gonna do. Oops. And um I but I went and found some good uh uh guess that kaiju uh, <laughs> quizzes awesome. quiz quiz questions, but I also have um a few questions from people that I know who just want to who just have genuine questions about uh, about kaiju in general and they wanted uh, and I said uh, I I have this guy who knows a lot about kaiju that's coming on the show tomorrow and I want to know if you have any questions about it and I, I did text my mom and ask her and she's like what's a kaiju and I was like you know what never mind <laughs> like, never mind you guys gonna be home next week I'll come down and visit oh, there you <laughs> so go. I was like yeah whatever yeah uh, no that's that sounds like a, I, I remember you uh, mentioning something of that tune and I was like well that sounds like a lot of fun because God knows I can just yammer. We could probably just yammer for a full hour and not run out of steam. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's good to have a little bit of structure to this. Yeah, and normally we would do, when we do a movie night with Matt, it's like a two-hour episode instead of a one-hour episode. So uh, this is actually, and that ends up being good because we are doing, we are uh, launching the Sundering tomorrow. And so we're going to have a live stream for that as well. And this way, uh, you know, we aren't going to be, you know, half dead and trying to scramble to get the last minute stuff done for that. And, yeah. and then wishing that we hadn't stayed up for an extra two hours to talk about <laughs> monster movies. It's like, it's like, it's like drinking, right? It's like you, you go out and you have fun when you go drinking, but then the next morning you're like, why did I do that? I regret it so much. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys being down for this stuff because it is really fun to share it with people. And that was sort of a, that was sort of the impetus behind my personal podcast, the Giganticast, which I have been neglecting. Uh, I uh, I have it over on oneofus.net, and you can find it on Apple and uh, on iTunes and all that. Uh, but it is one of those shows that does not have a schedule. I do mm -hmm. it when the mood strikes me or when I have an, a particular subject. Uh, I did one recently talking about norman england's book behind the kaiju curtain and i'm hoping to do another one here in the next couple uh, next week or so talking about red man uh the kaiju hunter the book i did with uh phase six and uh behemoth or happy tank or whatever their publishing name is now uh awesome yeah, yeah. 
So, um, and that, uh, that being said, if you guys, if you guys think that you can stump Matt with kaiju stuff, go ahead and pop the question into the You probably chat can. And, and we'll ask him. Well, My ADHD I, well, I kind of ass doesn't have, know everything. I, uh, I actually, when I was looking through, sifting through for good questions that were fun, I saw a bunch that were like, uh, what year did such and such a movie come out and, and... You know, after the uh, sidebar on the 98 Godzilla thing, I was like, oh, he probably knew all the answers to that. But I find those to be terribly boring versus talking about asking you questions about what actually happened in the movies. Yeah. You know, I don't and like what director did this and what director did I, I, what actors names like, no, that's I want to know what you know about what happens in the movie in the, in that world. That's what I like to, to do trivia about. So that is fine. I, that's. So I found this um, this name that trivia name that kaiju and uh, it's just like I'm gonna describe a kaiju and you you need to tell me which one it is. Okay. And that's what we're gonna do. For so sure. um, I guess and then and then yeah we have if you guys have questions pop them in the chat and we'll ask those after. And I also do have those other questions from a handful of people that I asked for you know what do they want to ask. Hell yeah! So, Hell um, yeah! Let's do this. Let's. I got my Let's screen go. over here, by the way, as it usually is, and this is the camera, so I will try my best to <laughs> pay attention to both. All right. Well, I will read off everything. If somebody comes in with a with a question, I'll read it off to you too, so that you can not have to worry so much about the uh, the, the screen. So, okay. Anyway, so question number one: Name that kaiju. A big red lobster with a large crushing claw, along with a small pointed claw, perfect for catching humans. That would be Ebera, the sea monster from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. As soon as you said Big Red Lobster, I was like, that's Ebera, but I want to hear the rest of the description. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, he's actually more of a shrimp, because uh, Ebi is, of course, the word, the Japanese word for shrimp. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and Ra is a common ending suffix for a monster name. So they just were like, Ebera. I had noticed that. Mm hmm there you go. I, I did notice that, yeah. That that seems to be a theme. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's see. Next question. A massive titan that has a blue atomic ray that was used to sever another kaiju's head off. Ew. With a blue atomic ray? A blue atomic ray. Gosh. Um, used to sever another titan's head? I'm gonna say Mothra. No, I'm gonna say uh, probably Godzilla. <laughs> According to this, you're wrong. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a it minute. It could be that the quiz is wrong, too. Read it to me again. A massive titan that has a blue atomic ray. This ray was used to sever another kaiju head off. It doesn't give any other details? That's all you get. A blue atomic ray to sever another kaiju's head. I'm I'm going through the Rolodex of like who else has a blue atomic ray uh and you and severed another monster's head with it, because that would be Godzilla specifically. But Godzilla doesn't have another name or anything because like I am a neophyte with this stuff, so I might be like, Oh, you're wrong, but really you're actually right. So Yeah, just tell know. me what the Let's answer is. Just be clear is. on that. Yeah, no, tell me what the answer is. Legendary Goji? That's Godzilla. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's what I was thinking right there. Uh, that's what popped in. I was like, you know what? That's his name. And yep, I thought maybe. It's so, it's just legendary Goji is the name. Every Godzilla has a nickname, mm -hmm. um, and you Fair get enough. you get like uh, and Goji is like Gojira. Gojira. It's short for Godzilla. So now when I say that, I, I was not exasperated at you. I was just like, yeah, no, the you, quiz. You nerds. I didn't write this. Um, I need to get. I need to get a and like we need to find a second monster nerd to help us write the questions to try and stump the other monster nerds. It's, so it, that's how it that's, works. But I'm yeah, telling you, the correct. <laughs> yeah, like I need to. I need to have somebody I'm sure knows what they're talking about to edit my questions. We'll uh, give me another one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. Next question: A crustacean that mutated from the oxygen destroyer. This beast took many forms. That would be Destoroya uh, from Godzilla versus Destroyer, or Destroyer, or Destroya, or 
there's like six, that's the problem is there's like six different pronunciations of these characters. But yeah, destroyer. Well, yeah, I was looking at it going, is that one called destroyer? What? And then I was like, no, it's destroyer. Okay, I got it. It's the Japanese pronunciation of the word destroyer. Fair so enough. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I had noticed that uh, that um, when when uh, we're watching um, somebody speaking in. Uh, Japanese or Korean or Chinese and they say an American word they add a lot of extra O sounds to it and I think from my failed attempt at learning Mandarin I um I I, I understand why <laughs> well yeah I mean uh, I know specifically I can't speak for Mandarin I can't speak for Mandarin speakers but I know in Japanese uh it's one of uh, there's in, in written Japanese, you can't have two consonants abut one another, uh, at least not without rare exception. So, destroyer becomes destoroya, because they have to put a, a vowel in between um, all the consonants. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes certain names very difficult to pronounce. Uh I believe it, but mm -hmm. I mean, once I once I looked at it, I was like, "Oh, see, I get it now." So yeah, it's not too bad. But yeah, um, we are at a, a time point here that I want to tell everybody. It's so like the people that like to sneak in and actually watch. You know, the people that like to pop in for the beginning and then they always leave. Um, yeah, the people that are still here. I want you guys to make sure because we are gonna. Uh, last week we were gonna have our uh, free comic book day like we usually do at the first of every month, the first Monday of every month, and we didn't do that because we had to uh, reschedule stuff. So um, this, and I promise that we'll give away something today. So since y'all are still here, make sure you comment in uh, because if I can't see you comment, then I don't know that you're here. I, I mean, I, I can see how many people are watching right now, so I can see you, but I don't know your names unless you comment. So. Make you sure you put comment. your name in there, and we're gonna draw. And um, and I'm not gonna tell you what we're gonna draw for yet, but we're gonna draw for something. And you have, if you want to be in that drawing, you have to comment. So, um, so far, let's see, Logan and Tessa on YouTube Tessa. Right here, and uh, Tiki and Saro are here from Twitch. And let's see, Sean, Sean Stiff. Says, hi, Sarah, Matt. You must have just popped in, so hey. And uh, Michael J. Dolan. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah, so yeah, make sure you comment so that you can can uh, get stuff. So with that being said, next question. Uh, yes. A mutated praying mantis that grew to a massive size and bullied Godzilla's son. That would be Kamakuras, or uh, Gymantis, as it's sometimes called. Uh... It, it, it's from first uh, in from Son of Godzilla. Uh, the, well, just the Son of Godzilla is the name of the movie. Uh, you can I, you can imagine what it's about. It's a legal drama. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, awesome. No, no, it's a, it, it, Son of Godzilla is a really fun one. It's it's a, it's a it's an island adventure Godzilla movie. One of like two or three island adventure Godzilla movies. So yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, Come, Mike Dolan asks, uh, is this limited to Toho Godzilla vs. only, or does it include, what is that, Day? Daye and, and Ultraman Daye Kaiju and Ultraman? as well. I don't know. Whatever. I, Whatever I mean, Matt says. I was going to say, it's uh, it's probably going to be mostly Godzilla monsters for this uh, this quiz. Oh yeah, for this quiz, for sure. Yeah, because, uh, and for those for those who want to know, Daye is the company that created Gamera, and they made a few other things too, but mostly they're known for Gamera. They don't exist anymore. Uh, all that stuff is owned by Katokawa now. And Ultraman is, of course, a whole other can of worms that we will get to another time. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we'll just stick to Toho stuff, Godzilla stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can. Well, it's just uh, going to be the stuff, way it is. But. You throw stuff at me. I, 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 Ultraman monsters can sometimes stump me. Uh, because there's so many of them. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I was looking hey, at this quiz earlier thinking there's a damn lot of Toho monsters. Like, there's a lot. Probably a lot, a lot of Toho <laughs> monsters. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, if you just have a question that you want, that you want Matt to answer, fire away for any of the above. Cause, uh, cause yeah, like, you know, if, if Matt doesn't know the answer, then it must be pretty hard to find, right? <laughs> 
Not yeah. impossible, but pretty difficult. Well, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I know a lot, but uh, my ADHD ass doesn't uh, sometimes has difficulty remembering certain details of stuff. So, you know, no, nothing's guaranteed. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Next question. Yeah. Three headed winged armless creature with golden scales and thunderous abilities. That one's an easy one. Even I know that one. King Ghidorah. Yeah. Or Ghidorah. Ghidra. King Ghidorah. I mean, I've, I've had people, that's the thing. These monsters, they have so many different pronunciations because of the language barrier and because mm -hmm. their names sometimes get changed uh, for foreign markets. Cause like, the Japanese per pronunciation, the way it's it's written out in Japanese is Ghidorah, Kingu Ghidorah, uh, mm -hmm. and spoken in spoken Japanese though it's uh, you know Japanese is spoken very fast by Japanese speakers, so a lot right. of those syllables and consonants sometimes get swallowed up. So Gid and I'm quoting David Callot here, who's like a super expert on this stuff. So Ghidorah becomes Ghidorah becomes Ghidra. Uh, and Ghidra kind of rolls off the tongue in English a little bit better, but I have had people like, like get real mad for not calling it Ghidorah. And I'm like, wow, you need to cool your jets. I, I feel like Ron Swanson sometimes where I'm just like, I know more than you. Uh, <laughs> so, well, it sounds like those people need to, uh, have a little lesson from an English major, because if you ask somebody, they'll say that it's not possible to teach people the own there's no such thing as one pronunciation for most words really because the a language that is being spoken today is alive and things change i mean we just watched a video this morning about is it pronounced gif or gif and i was like jesus christ not this shit again i am so i don't want to hear it i don't care no. i don't care i'm gonna you know what i'm talking about when i say now i don't even want to say it because I don't even know how I pronounce it usually. Yeah, um, I, I'm just like, you know what? Then fuck this. I'm just going to say, uh, I'll send you the, the graphics interchange format and you can deal with that. You know, like, yeah, it's yeah. fucking, ugh. Anyway. You parse that out from context clues. Uh, we could have a whole episode on GIF versus GIF. Must we? Uh, while, we're, while we're talking, I'm going to take <laughs> uh, this new Godzilla that I got. Uh, and I am going to from from Tarje, and I'm going to transform him because it's this new transforming Godzilla, and it's a nightmare. Uh, so keep. I have a question on my on my list. I, I made a list on my phone of uh, the questions that that people ask me, and I have a question about. It's not this specifically, but it's a good one. Uh huh. So anyway, uh -huh. you do that. I'm going to ask you another question. Please Aquatic do. Saurian kaiju. Was very was very dangerous with its acid agility and prehensile tongue. Say that again. This aquatic saurian kaiju was very dangerous with its acidic with its acid agility and prehensile tongue. Prehensile it, meaning they can grasp. Is that uh, what prehensile hold on? Means? Acid and prehensile tongue, and it's an aquatic saurian kaiju. Uh, that's what it says. Aquatic saurian kaiju with acid, agility, and prehensile tongue. Okay. I mean, aren't, well, okay, so not all of the kaiju are saurian, because saurian just means like a lizard, right? Saurian means uh, usually reptilian like, or, or dinosaurian. Yeah. Rep, reptile. A uh, 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 saurian kaiju with saurian acid? Saurian kaiju. With acid and a prehensile tongue. The two monsters I can think of that have prehensile tongues or at least use tongues as weapons are both Gamera monsters. Um, Cause I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of Zetus from Gamera the Brave and Barugon from Gamera versus Barugon. But uh, you know what? That one might stump me. You might have to tell me that one. No, you actually got it right. Um, it's Zetus. According to okay. This. <laughs> uh, I uh, okay. I I was just thinking like, yeah, it's a. I just don't. Oh, I guess it did have like an acid coated tongue, because it it sliced Gamera's neck open and it had like this burning sizzling sound. Hmm. Um, but they don't make a point of it, so you might not necessarily notice it. Yeah, I think it only used that ability like. <sighs> 
Yeah, they didn't really make much of a point of it, but yeah, so I'm just like, well, I'll just name kaiju I know that have weaponized tongues. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's that's still fun, though. Uh, I, I like that they threw in a Gamera monster. That Gamera the Brave is a highly underrated kaiju movie. We will probably have to watch that one at a certain point, because it is like, when it came out, a lot of kaiju fans kind of rejected it, uh, because... It was like 2005 and nerds weren't super into like an earnest stand by me esque coming of age story. Uh, and um, Japanese audiences kind of rejected it because they were completely burned out on kaiju at the time. Like like kaiju movies were tanking in the early 2000s and in, in the early to mid 2000s. Kind of so like us and Batman movies. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but this was for, well, no, I was about to say, you know what? I'm not going to talk about Batman movies. Um, but uh, no, I, I, Camera the Brave is so good. It's such a good movie. And it really deserves more of a shot than a lot of kaiju fans are willing to give it. Bummer. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I transformed him. Now he's a hideous nightmare. Um, he's a robot now? And he's got like this weird cyborg parts and yeah. I don't know what the story reason is because it's not in the movie. <laughs> hmm. So they did a Kong one too. To he's got Oak cool. Leaf. Oh, and see, now he looks a little bit like a soldier there. Like he's a yeah. space soldier or something. And I don't know what's going on with Godzilla though. So whatever. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, Saponu Sierra on YouTube said, good lord. In response to that just a good word <laughs> it's it's a weird one it's a weird one uh yeah i interesting. like it's kind of a throwback to a lot of 90s like weird ninja turtles toys that have a bunch of like crazy armor or they're like yeah suddenly and a lot they're... of them didn't make any or have any ties into the actual uh source material except uh, that they were fun to play with like that was about like i that's probably why they did it is because just that made them more fun to play with Oh, yeah, because in the 90s, Whatever. they did put, and I, of course I have them, they did put out these power-up Godzilla toys where Godzilla has this, like, snap-on armor with, like, a shoulder cannon, and, like, I, I don't know how Godzilla would have the patience to have that stuff put on his body, but uh, it's still, again, it's, it's fun for kids. fun for kids to play with, so that's what really matters. Internet. Sure. Um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, excuse me. It's, we're all working a lot. We're all working real hard. Yeah, well, if the freaking pressure would stop changing, the, the air pressure keeps changing. And, like, I, like, yesterday I was sick because the it was real low pressure because of the storms rolling through. And then, like, today it jacked back up. And now it's like, okay, yesterday my head felt like it was going to explode. And today it feels like I'm going to have my head crushed. So awesome. Oh, fun. Oh. <laughs> this is why I stay inside as much as I can. <laughs> I just hate the outside. It's even worse. It's bad. All right, next question. Show oh, this one is giving it away. Showing himself after a nuclear blast, this turtle eats fire and can fly in the air. Come on. I've got him. I've got him right here. <laughs> I've got old Gamera right here. I have, like, three shelves of Gamera. And I'm using the uh, Gamera Complete Collection that I worked on for Arrow Video as a, a table for these guys to stand on. <laughs> um, nice. Actually, here, I'll, I'll show it real quick, because I'm actually... Oh, God. <sighs> okay, it's really heavy. Um, <laughs> it's... Uh, uh, this is the giant, like, like uh, cereal box-sized Gamera set. This is the limited edition from Arrow, and I did the artwork for it, and I did, like, a bunch of the stuff inside of it. Um, so, yeah. Nice. I know my way around Gamera at this point. Awesome. Yeah. We will watch some... Oh. We're definitely watching some Gamera movies as part of the uh, as part of the show. No question. Yeah, I've been waiting for the turtle. I, I, I didn't know its name when I first learned about... Like, I saw the pictures and stuff, and I was like, I don't know what that turtle one's name is, but I want to watch the turtle one. And now, see... Gamera's gonna have to do some pretty fancy footwork to make to take the place of uh, Mothra in like my because like I think Mothra's my favorite so far so Gamera's Gamera, gonna have to do some stuff. 
Gamera is quickly has become one of my personal favorite monsters. Like probably my my if like somebody put a gun to my head and was like, okay, Godzilla or Kong, I'd be like Gamera. Like, don't make me choose. And if you make me choose, I'm gonna choose the one that's gonna piss you off because uh, Gamera hasn't had a movie since 2006, and they did a short film in like 2010 for his um anniversary uh or, or 2015 in 2015 they did like a short gamera film uh mm -hmm. that was like the 50th anniversary for gamera um but yeah like working on that box set I i'm honestly like struggling to choose which is going to be our first gamera movie because well oh. his yeah. movies he's got a whole series from the 60s and 70s that are fun and really goofy uh, uh, some of them are legitimately really well made, and but most of them are kind of dumb and silly, but they're still really fun. Uh, and then there's the 90s Gamera trilogy, which are three of the best monster movies ever made. And then there's Gamera the Brave, which everybody ignores, even though it's legitimately also one of the best monster movies ever made. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna anyway. argue. <laughs> Damn right, okay. Not. Um, <laughs> Next question. Well, how could I? I can't argue with that. <laughs> sure. A uh, smaller red horned kaiju that can burrow underground and cover its face with its ears. That would be Bar 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 Baragon. Baragon. He was in uh, GMK, the first one we watched. Yeah, I remember that. See, I might not have gotten it except that I remember the ears going over the face. I remember that. Uh, so, and, and it's adorable. Yes, uh, I actually, well, hmm, I don't want to give too much away, but let's say that Matt did something Baragon-related recently for Toho and the good people at Ghost X Ghost, so keep an eye open for that. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. Next. Oh, another easy one. Mm. Massive ape who has fought many enemies such as large dinosaurs and massive snakes. Uh, well, I wonder who it could be. Uh, that would be old Kong, old King Kong. He, uh, I, I mean, Kong is sort of the granddaddy of this genre because, like, a, a lot of people don't really consider the original Kong to be a kaiju movie simply because it predates Godzilla, and mm -hmm. kaiju wasn't really like a. The term kaiju had already been floating around, but it had not really been popularized until Godzilla came along. Uh, but uh, so the original Kong, a lot of people in Japan refer to as a monster movie, like literally a monster movie, monster, uh, and um, not the monsters from the uh, seminal 1990 whatever classic Space Jam. Um, Six. It feels it's like on a... Netflix now. I just watched it. <laughs> oh, all right then. Yeah, you know that original Space Jam is actually kind of funny. Like it actually has some legitimately good jokes in it. Yeah, it's not. I haven't seen the new one yet, but the like it's it's not a masterpiece, but it's not the piece of shit that some people like to say it is. It's not a good uh, movie, but it is fun. It's entertaining, and it keep and it moves at a good clip, and it is very much a product of its time. And the new Space Jam feels a lot more like everything that the original Space Jam was on the bad side of things and not nearly the good yeah. side of things. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, I mean, the probably wanted... going to watch it eventually, but I didn't. I wasn't interested in it enough to go to the theater or and or seek it out or anything. Like I'll just wait till it comes out on a streaming service that we have, and then I'll watch it. I actually reviewed it on Gigantacast for some fucking reason uh, with my friend Annabelle. And... Lost a bet. <laughs> well, she like threatened me into watching it, and then we watched it, and then she threatened me into recording a Gigantacast about it. And I'm like, must we? <laughs> and it's <laughs> it, it's not terrible. Like it's not unwatchable but there is like a lot of hot garbage annabelle made this mm. for me it's a biolante made out of pipe cleaners oh yeah it's cute ah, i like it i miss i miss pipe cleaners pipe cleaners are fun <laughs> i should just sit and make something out of pipe cleaners like we did in kindergarten yeah okay mm. 
I've got one that I actually like the there was a string of them that like I knew the answers to, but this <laughs> one I don't. So okay. hit me with it. They searched with their baby and destroyed all in their path. They can fly, swim, and shoot a radiating heat beam. Hell yeah. Okay. I know exactly this one. It's Gappa the Trifibian monster. Uh G Gappa. Uh G Gappa is a weird movie. It's the I believe to date it was the first it was the first real kaiju movie made by Shochiku, which is the company that eventually put out um what to do with the dead kaiju. Gappa is it's got a lot of fun stuff in it. I, there are a few things that make it kind of hard to watch. We may have to put it on at some point because it's, it's, it is, it, it is entertaining. Uh, I just find the, the romantic subplot to be really teeth grindy because it's mm. very yeah. sexist. Like it eventually becomes oh. very sexist and very kind of gross. Uh, oh, good. But, there's some really fun tokusatsu, like the which the Japanese word for special effects. Um, it's it's 1960s, like right at the height of the kaiju boom, as it's called. And it's like a mother and father. These this mother and father kaiju uh, couple, their baby gets kidnapped by a Japanese corporation, so they rampage across Japan trying to find the baby. And I mean, and they're unstoppable. And uh, and instead of just giving the baby back, the characters are just like, well, no, we should keep shooting them. Which is also more or less the plot of the uh, of the movie Gorgo, uh, which is a classic British kaiju movie or giant monster movie. Yeah, and, and Mothra. We, the last one we watched was Mothra. And it's like, this must be a, a recurring theme where... Uh, somebody steals a, a loved one from the monster, and the monster fucking flattens everything in their path, trying to get their loved one back. That is a that is a thing, I guess. It, it, well, I mean, a lot of it comes from the trope of it comes from an inversion on King Kong, because you know the original King Kong. It's about Kong becoming infatuated with Fay Ray's character, and mm -hmm. Kong goes on a rampage trying to find her, trying to get her back. Um, whereas, and I think. Uh, and back when that movie was made, it was just kind of taken taken as a given that the monster is going to die at the end of the movie, because mm -hmm. the monster is incompatible with human civilization. Yes, therefore, it must be destroyed. Yeah. Uh, whereas on the Japanese side of things, they were looking at this this storytelling idea and thinking like, well, the monster's not really in the wrong. Like the monster kind of represents. Um, represents the natural forces that we take for granted and the japanese have a different relationship with nature than we do you know they're kind of constantly under the thumb of nature from either earthquakes or typhoons or tsunamis whereas here in america we like to pretend that we've conquered nature uh oh is that wildfire in georgetown still going oh yeah probably well we'll just ignore that <laughs> so yeah what? Hmm? um Michael J. Nolan. I like. I just like the the whole the whole name just kind of rolls Michael off. Michael J. Nolan, attorney of law. Michael J. Nolan. Uh, like kind of like it, uh, you should run for president. That's a good strong presidential name. President. Um, Matt, I gotta ask, why is it that every time you come onto the show, we that's the only time we ever get spammers on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Naked dash HD telling us that they can find us somebody to screw tonight. Like, you know what? I wasn't going to screw anybody. I was going to have a bowl of macaroni and cheese and go to bed, okay? <laughs> I I was going to say, I'd be more flattered by that if it uh, translated to more to, like, higher view numbers. Like, maybe if we were in the mm. way higher numbers, I would be like, hell yeah, spammers, you know what's up. And now I'm just like, uh, now I'm just like, oh, no, I, I think it's, well, maybe they have an algorithm search where it's like, oh, okay, anything with Godzilla or Kaiju or Matt Frank in the title <laughs> automatically send bullshit towards that. I don't know. Uh, something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Mike said, I have also read that at least one translation of Gappa has an appallingly racist line that pr prompted an audience in Chicago to wreck the theater in outrage. That was a thing. I have not heard that. That sounds anecdotal. 
Uh, if uh, Michael, if you have, if you've heard, if you can find that, uh, Michael or whoever, uh, send that to me. Like, send it to me on Twitter or Instagram or something. I'm really yeah. curious to to know more about that. If that is in fact a true story, I kind of doubt it. Yeah. Not saying you're a liar, Michael. I'm just saying that I don't know how. If there is a riot because of a kaiju movie. I think people would know about that. <laughs> Entirely possible. Okay, I have one more one more of these, which isn't really a name. Well, no, it's kind of. But anyway, um, and then we're going to move to the ones, uh, the questions that we want to know more about to have you answer. Hell yeah. Um, he said it's a reference in the book, The Son of the Golden Turkey Awards. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look into that. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can... Uh, Post about it on Twitter or whatever and let us know. Sure. Okay. So last question is um, who Godzilla's first foe? Angurus from Godzilla. Technically, it was, was technically it was man. Uh, but uh, the uh, the first Godzilla's first foe was Angurus from Godzilla Raids again, uh, which is uh it was made a year after it was like they had like less than a year after the first godzilla to make this movie uh it's kind of the definition of a quickie sequel uh it was the only other godzilla movie in black and white and it's not particularly good there's some good stuff in it and and Guris is a great monster he's sort of a spiky ankylosaurus looking guy um and he's a fan favorite monster uh funny story uh that one godzilla raids again so that movie was heavily altered for its american release uh where they called it gigantus the fire monster because godzilla was not seen as like a franchise type character at the time like the american distributors thought it would be safer to try to pretend it was a new monster because that's what people want people like want what's this new monster uh but um uh, when it comes to this particular film, uh, oh man, I had a man, stupid ADHD. Um, th that movie was like, like the original Godzilla, like some people kind of poo poo the original Godzilla, N not the original movie, but, the that movie had an American version, which was Godzilla King of the Monsters, uh, with, then they inserted scenes of Raymond Burr and really the American version of that movie uh, is pretty respectful. Like they do trim out some of the nuclear Holocaust subtext, uh, and they trim out some of the wartime uh, trauma and some of the wartime tension. But uh, it, but they kept it pretty respectful, and they kept the tone pretty consistent. And Raymond Burr like does a really good job, like in the movie. Like he is just kind of reacting to what's happening just off screen that he's not seeing, but. It's uh, it, they did a solid job, and um, Gigantus the Fire Monster, though the uh, recut of the second Godzilla movie, they gave everyone like weird, goofy voices. Like they gave one guy a voice like this, and they're like, "Oh, golly, gee whiz, I'm gonna, ooh, oh no, it's the monsters!" And I'm like, "Okay," and they inserted a bunch of like footage, like extra stock footage, to kind of set up that like Japan is the. The country of Japan is a small nation of farmers. And it's like, what? I just, it's a weird, vaguely racist <laughs> version of the film. But uh, yeah. Anyway, there's vaguely more I can talk about with that. Isn't, isn't the worst thing we've done. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the history of uh, Americanizing uh, uh, Japanese products and films and stuff. But let's not talk about that today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, reminder, everybody that's watching, if you want to be in the drawing to win the free thus far secret prize, free you got to comment. Got to comment so that I can uh, so that I can see that you're here. Um, comment. Yeah, and I got to just make sure, like everybody. Okay, spaceman stiff from beyond infinity. That is a hell of a name. That's a good one. Is it the stiff oxygen or destroyer stiff? destroyer is the one true enemy. Oh, the oxygen destroyer. That's the weapon that they use at the end of the original Godzilla. And it kind of is. It's like the one thing that can actually hurt Godzilla. Um, ah, cool. 
Well, well, I'm actually thinking that for November 3rd this year, uh, or around about early November, we should watch the original Godzilla for this show. Uh, because that will be, uh, November 3rd is Godzilla's birthday. That oh. was when the original, that was when uh, the original Godzilla was, was released in theaters in Japan. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, I haven't thought far enough ahead to schedule November yet. So, oh, I've been, so yeah, I've been thinking. we'll do it. Let's, let's do it. I'm um, afraid I've been thinking a dangerous habit. I know, uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Oh, uh, and I know what that. Oh, hmm? is that from? Is that from Beauty and the Beast? Yep, you got it. I win. Uh, all right. Tessa says, "Which kaiju has the biggest '90s dad that's mad at you for touching the thermostat vibes?" <laughs> I mean, most of them. Uh, but uh, I mean, Godzilla really is kind of the one that's that's the. Did you touch my thermostat? Like, Godzilla really is the one with those kind of vibes. Also, hi, Tessa. Um, I mean, so much of kaiju media is b b the hubris, you know, the hubris of mankind. And uh, it's about mankind touching, humankind touching a thermostat. I'm touching a thermostat. <laughs> Oh, I want to make it cool. I want to make it warmer. And just a kaiju pushing a door of me like... <laughs> yeah. so yeah it, it, it's kind Fabulous. of i'm gonna say most of them <laughs> fair enough okay so uh, i've got uh, do we have time for this i've got four more yeah. four more questions and they all seem pretty simple so hopefully okay yeah so um is pacific rim part of the kaiju universe and this is probably your opinion, I suppose, as much as it is uh, a fact, but is Pacific Rim part of the part of the greater kaiju universe? I mean, yeah, it's Pacific Rim is one of those movies that uh, does sit in a slightly odd place. Uh, but at this point, it is well. When people say kaiju universe, it's kind of tough to uh, parse out what that actually means because it's definitely not like in any other universe or any other franchise but its own um but that being said it is like part of the broader kaiju tapestry because it it is the film that came out and showed what modern movie making technology can actually do with this genre uh because up to that point the closest thing was probably cloverfield which i really like cloverfield i have a lot of really fond memory of that film one of the best uh, theater experiences I've ever had. Uh, but Pacific Rim was really like, no, this is what you can do with this genre. Um, and it is kaiju. Like, it's a it's a kaiju movie. They use the word enough. And I, I'm at the point where it's like, a kaiju is a, something that, and I trust me, I've, 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 we talked about this. <laughs> but uh, uh, people are always asking me, like, but, but is this a kaiju or is that a kaiju? And it's like, a kaiju is one of those things to quote um overly sarcastic productions who they have like the perfect i think the perfect video on this subject you know it when you see it you know a kaiju when you see one and if you have to ask is this a kaiju then it's probably not a kaiju uh there's stuff that's like kaiju adjacent but yeah pacific rim is like it's a it's it's part of the of the tapestry of the genre and uh I don't particularly. I didn't. I, I. I like that the first movie a lot. Don't like the sequel hardly at all. There's like a few little things in the sequel I liked. Uh, the anime series on Netflix is okay. Like I've seen like maybe the first few episodes, and uh, I mostly am upset that these are supposed to be Australian characters and they don't have Australian accents. And I'm like, <laughs> come on, guys, it's not that hard. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Um. Well, okay, so so I got a question there because I had the Transformers thing in my head. So okay. if Pacific Rim is part of the universe, then... The genre, I would he, say. Yeah, well, can a Jaeger beat an Autobot from Transformers? What do you think? I mean, auto Autobots on average aren't very big. Like, they're maybe, what, 30, 20 feet, 30 feet tall? And a Jaeger is, like, 300 feet tall. Uh, so on size alone. Yeah, I mean, at, th at that point, you're then, like, saying, okay, like, 
Devastator could probably stand toe to toe with one of the Jaegers. Like, and Devastator, you know, being a combiner, like you, you have to have like, because there are different scalings of transformers. Like, you've got your standard size, which is like, shit, I'm getting in a deep lore for transformers. Um, you have your standard Autobots, which are 20 to 30 feet. Like, Optimus Prime is maybe only about 30, 35 feet tall. And then you've got. You know, your combiners, which are like Devastator and Predaking and stuff, which are like even bigger than that. You've got your Dinobots, which are bigger than the average Autobot or Decepticon. And then you've got you've got the, the Titans from that universe, which are giant city transformers, or you've got Omega Supreme, who's really big, but he's not like Titan big and it depends on the transformer. <laughs> well like Bumblebee's going down though. Like Bumblebee he's, would probably get not, stepped on. Well, Bumblebee yeah, would probably no. You know what? Bumblebee would find a way to climb uh, the Jaeger and shove like a bomb in one of its joints or something. Like, like that's that's how you take it down. It's the it's Attack on Titan rules. So it's so like, this, like uh, uh, cause um okay, stop me if I'm wrong. Jaegers are operated by pilots. Yes. Whereas um, Autobots are kind of like AI. So if if but well ai like but they're like they're alive you, you just of. made an entire view viewership of transformers fans pop a blood vessel like <laughs> i'm sure i did but like i i watched transformers back then too i i watched the cartoons and like they were alive yeah I, they're, I, I they're, don't know like they're but they're, i guess well i guess they're aliens right so it's like, they look like cars so it's us to us we think they're machines they're silicon they're, not, so. they're silicon based life forms that have yeah. robotics as part of their biology yeah so like i'm just yeah. i'm just like out of out of practice like i've i'm too far removed from the i've, I, I've seen it all i just been, uh, haven't seen it in a long time but. i've been screaming about i i i did a full let's i did a full playthrough of transformers fall of cybertron over on rage select on youtube and it's mostly me yelling about Transformers lore at my co-host Jeff and him saying that sounds stupid. Um, <laughs> so it's not wrong, but uh, the Transformers yeah, comics, well, by the way, the Transformers comics, super LGBTQ plus positive. Uh, oh, cool. A lot of Transformers are gay because they don't reproduce sexually. So they have no like, they're just like... Okay. Oh, this is my partner, you know, and but that it totally destroys emotional. that it's not natural argument then, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, well, I, I haven't seen the, uh, I think I saw the first Transformers movie, the, Sh the Shia movies. I saw the first one, and then I've seen none since because I'll be honest, I'm, I'm fucking, I got stuck in Chicago for like five hours on an extremely hot July day. The bot, have you ever been in your car and the bottom of your car got hot? Like the floor of your car got hot? Ooh. I had, uh -huh. okay, so, cause I mean, I know you're not supposed to, but I, so I was stuck in a traffic jam and I was just like, this is, this is fucking awful. And I uh, took my shoes off and I had my windows down and I had turned off the goddamn car because that's how long we were sitting still. And the bottom of the car got hot. Like I could feel it with my bare feet. And I was oh. like, this, this isn't normal. And there was a point at which it got so hot because you know, you go through those cement tunnels and sure. it got so hot that I had no choice but to, if I didn't want to die of, of overheating, I had to roll up the windows and turn the car on and turn the air on. And, and oh. it, was, it was awful. And it was That's because awful. they fucking shut down Michigan Avenue in Chicago. That's like the main artery of that freaking downtown. And they shut it down for a goddamn Transformers movie. <laughs> so fuck Shia LaBeouf. Oh uh, well, uh, what's well, not Shia's fault? It's my fault. I know, but no, uh, but he's rich and he's never gonna see me. So well, the uh, I would say don't bother with any of the other movies. Uh, do watch <laughs> the Bumblebee movie. The Bumblebee movie is legitimately like well, it's basically a live action Iron Giant slash Black oh, cool. Beauty. Like it's yeah, a girl in her car movie. So yeah. I highly recommend it. I have heard that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what do kaiju eat? It depends on the kaiju. Um, ah. some, of, some of them don't uh, physically eat because they don't need to. 
Some of them are powered by the Earth's life force itself. Like, that's where Gamera gets his power. He gets it from, like, from the Earth's spirit. Uh, Godzilla tr does has been known to hunt, like, like stuff like whales uh, and maybe other kaiju. But uh, his primary source of nourishment is radioactive energy. Um in uh some of the in some of the older movies he attacks nuclear power plants and like tears out the reactor and absorbs the energy uh hmm. and then in uh the recent movies he uh has a, like a layer like under the earth's mantle that's like drawing radiation from the core of the earth and uh in Shin Godzilla, his body becomes a perpetual energy machine, so he just is constantly creating his own energy. Uh, and then you've got stuff like Rodan. Rodan eats people, cattle, uh, whales, dolphins, giant fish uh, that it can find, uh, oh, giant bugs. Uh, there are, like, kaiju um, food chains as well, so... Uh, but a lot of kaiju just feed off of self-sustaining energy of some kind. So there you go. More than so you ever wanted just, to know. They're just popping humans like Tic Tacs. It's just like a snack. It's not actually... They don't need them. Not, they just, not they just, yet. They don't eat them, though, do they? They just kill them. Well, not many kaiju really eat people. Like, uh, they just, they just some, of, them. some of them are just so big, they just don't eat people because people just aren't <laughs> although gauss from the gamera series likes to munch on some people the gamera monsters really like eating people because you know gamera is a good guy and these monsters are bad guys so the thing to make them extra scary is have them eat people so yeah the gamera monsters like like to nibble on some nummies like some humans all right then yeah i mean who hasn't felt that way on occasion uh, <laughs> eyebrows, eyebrows. Uh. J, J man just popped in and says hi Sarah and Matt hi J man I mean hi, you kind of snuck in here right at the end but uh but hey it was soon enough to get your name in the drawing for the free shit so there you go um, ah! it's okay that thing went away we're gonna oh, find no. it I'm gonna oh, no. um no it was an easy one it was about our oh um our kaiju dinosaurs that's what it was. I, I'm not. I'm flipping through, and I'm like, I don't need it because it was archaeo dinosaurs. That's the there last are, question, and then we're gonna do the drawing. There are some dinosaurs that are kaiju, but kaiju are not like dinosaurs by default. Like, again, it's a very nebulous. Like, Mothra is not a dinosaur; it, she's a bug. Right. Uh, Gamera. So is dinosaurs a turtle. can be kaiju, but kaiju are not dino. Mm, okay. Dinosaurs can be kaiju. But not all kaiju are dinosaurs, which also applies to monsters. Like all monsters are ki uh, all kaiju are monsters, but not all monsters are kaiju. Like that's usually that's that's like official word from like the people who do Ultraman. Um, my buddy Toshi told me that, and he does the subtitles for the official Ultraman uh, episodes. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, because I mean they are they are dinosaur like. A lot of them are dinosaur-like in appearance, but yeah, definitely not necessarily a dinosaur. Um, well, Radstar Father snuck in here too and says, "Hey, howdy." Radstar Father, time, hey. And, and Tessa M said, "I didn't know I was incentivized incentivized with the possibility of stuff, and and you are like like you were just you were just commenting for the pure joy of it, but as a fun little extra here." And I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna add Jayman and Red Star Father. And so, okay, if you guys, okay, whoever wins the drawing, and if you haven't commented yet, but you're here watching, do, uh, do make sure that you um, comment here in the next minute or so because do that voodoo draw here that you do so soon. well. <laughs> and uh, and okay, so yeah, comment. I'm gonna, I'm going to do this drawing here in just a minute and. We're gonna send you something, and um, if you win, you can just um, you can either if you have like me on Facebook or something, then you can message me directly, but other, or message Lori directly. She's you know she's not here today, but she still exists. So I think. Is this, I mean, it might be a, might be a Schrodinger's box thing. I don't know, but uh, but we're like fairly I think certain she's... 
she has not slipped out of this reality. Um, I, yeah, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. I mean, she's been responding to, to messages all day long. You know, it's, it's, it's probably fine. But I really can't make any promises because I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, no. As of an hour ago, she was fine. <laughs> So anyway, anyway, anyway. J Man said, wouldn't the wouldn't Power Rangers baddies be considered kaiju? Uh, kaiju adjacent. Uh typically um uh again, it's a question of it's a question of like if you you'll know it when you see it, because um kaiju monster I mean uh, uh Power Ranger monster or Sentai monsters uh, typically in Japanese, they're referred to as kaijin. Uh, a kaijin is like a kaiju, but a kaiju means like mysterious beast. And jin is uh, is the word for like a person, uh, like a humanoid thing of some type. Like uh, seijin is a, a common Japanese word for an alien, which it means star person. Uh, and uh, anyway, that's a convoluted way of saying... Sometimes, but not always. Uh, like a lot of a lot of Power Ranger monsters, they're just these cons. They sh because they start off kind of human sized, and then they grow gigantic to fight the Megazords and stuff. As a result, like a lot of kaiju, that's not that's just not typically how kaiju play out in their own stuff. But you know, I, if you don't want to split hairs so much, you know, whatever. Again, it it it's kind of depends on what your narrative considers to be. There are like straight up kaiju style monsters in those universes but they they typically start off gigantic and they're like sort of like ultimate enemies of some kind it's like oh it's this legendary monster that rita is summoned from the butthole dimension i don't know uh and um so you know the answer is <laughs> oh okay yeah that clears it up yeah. um yeah, Radstar Father said, oh, I didn't even know there was a raffle. I just joined. Fun little surprise. That it is. Um, oh, Sarah yeah. OG says, I feel like a kaiju always has to be big. Sentai monster go big. <laughs> well, it's not that big. And, uh, big. and like, um, I think I wish she's uh, being big for a moth. <laughs> big, <laughs> big, big, but not like when you compare her to the other, di the other kaiju. She's not... She's on the smaller end of the kaiju. Well, uh, actually, uh, in the origin, in, when Godzilla, when that, when Mothra originally fought Godzilla in 1964, she's a little bit bigger than him. Like her body is maybe a little smaller than him, but her wingspan is like huge. Like she's. Okay, we have not watched that movie yet, that so one. maybe that's just because we only saw the. Um... Or, you saw the, the we saw GMK and we saw the original GMK, Mothra. Yeah, yeah. The Mo original Mothra didn't have any other kaiju to compare her against, but but yeah, GMK sh definitely not the biggest one in that one. So well, yeah, she was kind of on the smaller side, but that's because they shrank everyone, all the other monsters down a little bit to make them feel smaller compared to Godzilla. Normally, mm -hmm. Mothra is pretty Fair big enough. compared to Godzilla, but the broader point is that. Um, uh, being gigantic is not a hard and fast rule for kaiju. Uh, like there are kaiju that are just kind of human sized or dinosaur sized or whatever that aren't that big. Again, it's what your narrative decides is a kaiju or kaiju adjacent. Like they don't call the monsters in the new Godzilla movies kaiju. They call them titans. Well, they first right. called them mutos, massive unidentified terrestrial organisms. And then they scrapped that and were like... I did read yeah. some... one Some director said something about um, uh, their the mutos until they're identified. And then you can't continue to call them mutos because then they'd be mitos, I guess. But... Like, Massive identified then they call them titans. Yeah, they, t they call them titans because then they've been classified. So, yeah. Well, they call... They call them Titans because they didn't want to call them Kaiju and they wanted something different because Pacific Rim kind of co-opted the word and they're like, well, I guess we got to call them something different just to differentiate our monsters in a, in a specific way. 
I mean, but now, you know, that game Gigabash came out and Gigabash, that that kind of party brawler, uh, just posted episode one over on Rage Select. Yeah, of I me, think somebody Tessa. commented about Gigabash here at some point. Yeah, uh, me, Tessa, was like, and Jeff played Gigabash, and uh, that was really fun. And they call them Titans in that game, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and Mike said, most Sentai monsters are self-aware and speech-capable, which is not typically kaiju traits. So, cool. Yeah. Kaiju, kaiju rarely, if ever, talk. Like, off the top of my head, I know that Zegra can talk. Zegra is a giant space shark uh, with hyper-intelligence. Uh... But it's a rare quality. Most kaiju are are animals, are animalistic. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, J Man had one question, and and we'll have to answer it quick. And while Matt's answering it, I'm gonna pop the the, the clicky spinny wheel up here, and I want y'all to make sure that your name's on it, because if your name's not on it, you're not getting the prize, and I won't be held responsible at that point because I asked you to make sure your name's on it. So make okay, sure. So J-Man asked, Matt, in the newer current Godzilla movies, what would you like to see in one that none of them already have? So what I would like to see in the, the like, MonsterVerse Godzilla stuff is, well, first of all, what I like to see is for them to stop trying to pretend like Godzilla is a good guy in any way, uh, because they're, they've been wringing their hands for three movies now, pretending that Godzilla is like not a danger to everyone around him uh you know oh he's a protector of balance but even even so like okay first off he's a radioactive monster which means that he is walking anti-life uh he would kill everything around him and secondly or irradiate it and make it mutate in weird ways like the boars in chernobyl that everybody likes to talk about they're born with shrunken brains like it's not good and then, um, but what I really would like to see is for Godzilla to go full on, like if they're, if Godzilla is the protector of balance or whatever, then Godzilla needs to go full eco-terrorist and start destroying like big corporate, corporate sites and stuff. Needs to like to start destroying big factories and stuff or shipping, uh, big shipping fleets and things like that. Um, hmm. Secondly, I want to see Hedera, the uh, smog monster. That needs to be a monster in the MonsterVerse because it's a pollution-themed monster and it's uh, it's a really simple, broad concept that they can really lean into. Uh, I want them to bring Hedera back. Uh, besides from that, I want to see some more original stuff. I want to see new monsters. I want to see new weird monsters and I want to see them have a little more screen time. Yeah. Good, good answer. Huh. Bye. Okay. I, um, okay, so I think I didn't get anybody saying that they, uh, that their name isn't on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the, the big wheel. We click can the wheel. The it's very satisfying clickies. So. Clickies. Here we go. Oh, Aww, God. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. No clickies. Woo! Sean wins. Sean, Sean wins. Uh, Sean Stiff, right? That was Sean Stiff. Name. That was your name, last name. Yes, Sean Stiff. All right. Because well, I it made me wonder for a second. I'm like, is Spaceman Stiff and Sean Stiff the same person commenting <laughs> on different platforms? Because that's cheating, and I did not specifically say that you couldn't do that. So <laughs> I guess that one's on me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I get uh, yeah you guys got to put your hands up at a certain point and be like i guess yay <laughs> so okay so sean stiff if you are still watching because i uh, if you're not then i guess nobody wins but the prize <laughs> okay so the fun little thing is the prize is um tell me tell me what you want from the uhs library otherwise you're if you don't if you just tell us that you uh you, you know because you also have to give us your give us your mailing address so we can mail it to you but um yeah tell me what you want otherwise you're getting a miss medusa number one and that was oh, from gosh. the boss lady herself so awesome yeah so yeah uh, if you if you got if there's something that you don't have from our library that's what you can have that's what, yeah. that's what you just won so um message 
Like I said, message me or Lori or the Unlikely Hero Studios Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter. Jesus, how many freaking... Okay, um, can you message people on YouTube? I don't know if you can do that, but if you can, I guess, you know, no. we're monitoring those, so... <laughs> I, I, I would not. I would say do the Twitter or the Instagram. That's the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah. Don't don't post it in public. That's, you know, don't post your address in public. Obviously, we don't want that happening. <laughs> yeah. But uh but yeah, just that you you know, like most most everybody seems to know how to get a hold of us. So, um but like, you know, message the Unlikely Hero Studios Instagram or Twitter or Facebook page and we'll get you. And uh, just tell us what you want and tell us where to send it. And then that's it. That's what you get. Yeah, that's so, what you get. So that that is that is it, and you know, I think that we could have had like a whole nother hour of um, name that kaiju, but uh, I, I, I exposing the flaws in that quiz. But uh, yeah, we've yeah we already we're like we're like an hour and fifteen minutes here, so we already yeah. went over the hour that we the, the previously agreed upon hour. Yeah, allocated. So. <laughs> no, I mean that's a, that's fine. You know, I I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I do have to get back to work myself because uh, I have a certain comic that I really need to be uh, getting done. So uh, I'm gonna get back to work on that after I go to the bathroom. Uh, and uh, yeah. Um, this was fun though. This was fun doing a little bonus yeah. episode. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We we will be rescheduling uh, for our Howl from Beyond the Fog discussion. I'm very excited to talk about this film. Yes, I think that that's still going to be happening in the month of August. I think that we are I mean, still doing, but but otherwise, you know, it won't be too far off in the future. So uh, no. e either way, we're definitely doing it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my hope is that we can at, at the try to do one of these a month uh, at, if it doesn't mess with y'all's schedule too much. But, I mean, in most, maybe every every second month, every other month. But mm -hmm. they're a lot of fun, and I'm kind of building a building an itinerary in my head because, you know, we did, a, we did my favorite Godzilla movie first, which is kind of a thematically rich but also very weird and kind of silly movie in a lot of ways we did the mm -hmm. original mothra which is a again kind of kind of campy and retro but also thematically rich and very classy a very classy production now we're doing kind of an artsy fartsy super indie kaiju movie uh it's short it's only 45 minutes so it's not gonna take like a whole evening and then yeah. uh and then um, I'm kind of rolling some dice on which one I want to do after that. Maybe we'll do a Gamera movie. Uh, that would be really fun. I've uh, be cool, Gamera. G yeah. I want to. I want to meet Gamera. I have not met Gamera yet, and I, you know, I'm always going to be fine with more movies with Mothra. Well, I, like I, Mothra. I, I would be too. I'm very. Uh, I, I loves me some Mothra as well. I just got a. I gotta space this stuff out <laughs> because uh, I'm finding that I I'm surprised because like the reason that I had not watched any kaiju movies in the past is because I just I didn't expect that I would be interested in them, and I had seen some that I like half watched. Uh, I I know that I've seen at least some of the original King Kong movie, and I know some people don't consider that one to be kaiju, but like it's a giant it's a giant it's a, animal thing that's the, attacking attacking a city. It's in but, the genre. Yeah. It's a genre adjacent. It's again. It's like yeah. I said. It's kind of the grandfather of the genre. Well, I'm just glad you're liking. Uh, you're liking these movies, and I'm. I, yeah, you know... I didn't expect to, but like they're they're fun, and like the campiness of Mothra, and like just if you can, I know like the, we are spoiled in America with the um, amazing lifelike graphics that we get. So you can you can kind of just shrug off these older Toho movies and go, oh, it's a piece of shit. Look at that shitty, but like. It's a dude in a suit who is doing all that, and like, look at the suit. And so, if you can just, you know, suspend your, you know, what is it, um, suspension it's of disbelief? Sus suspending your disbelief. Yeah, it's like if yeah. you can just get over that, then they're really, actually, they're really good movies. They're really, like, I and I don't ever have a problem with that. So I was immediately surprised that I was enjoying them right off well, the bat. A lot of people, I mean, and, and uh, trust me, we'll probably get into this on another episode, but a lot of people tend to. Uh, Oh yeah, Red Star Father. Thank you. Biolante is uh, definitely one of the ones on the list. Um, uh, oh, cool. That's uh, she's a giant flower, um, <laughs> and uh, it's a kitty. That means the video's over. Um, but yes. yeah, 
it, it's a uh, well. Last thing I'll say is like this genre really uh, has been a, a, a victim of um, a lot of cultural bias for a really long time. Uh, especially a lot of like post-war anti-Japanese bias. Um, a lot of, you know, critics will, a lot of film critics back in the, um, back in the fifties and sixties and seventies, uh, really poo-pooed this genre because, um, not so much because of the production value, but because it was coming from Japan. Mm -hmm. And as a result, um, you had these other movies coming out about the same time that were coming out from Europe or from America that were also monster movies and sci-fi movies who would get, these movies would get like a lot of praise but their quality level is at least on par or like maybe even a little less good than some of the like, okay, I gotta get it out, I gotta get it out of the system, out of my system um, <laughs> Ray Harryhausen's movie, the, the movies by Ray Harryhausen, or the movies with effects by Ray Harryhausen, stuff like A Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, um, uh, the, uh, oh crap, what's the name of that? Uh, or, 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 come on, Matt, uh, 20 Million Miles to Earth, um, the uh, Earth versus the Flying Saucers. And these movies are classics, uh, but the thing that makes them really notable are this are the stop motion effects which required a tremendous amount of time and, and money which you know toho didn't have the stories mm -hmm. from the japanese side of things are on a large part just as good if not better but because they're filled with japanese people because they're dubbed and because you know they don't have the stop motion effects they kind of got they, they were kind of brushed aside uh, where where they found an audience with a lot of either kids watching them on TV or kids going to see them at drive-in theaters or during matinees and stuff. Because um, you really kind of have to be a kid to get into this stuff or have that kind of childlike wonder, uh, which is why I'm so glad that I've been able to get a couple of adults in my life actually into this stuff. <laughs> so... Yeah. 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 It, it, it is. Um, and I think it's it's cool that people are kind of coming around a little bit because I feel like Godzilla and well kaiju in general, like that's all it's all a much bigger part of pop culture now than it was when I was a kid, and you know, obviously before that. But so that's cool. Oh, that's good. The internet's Positive. opened up a lot of a lot of things, and people are every every mm -hmm. genre that has an audience is getting new content as far as I know. Uh, thank you, Tessa. Yes. Tessa actually put in a bunch of, like, Tessa put in a couple of really good questions and I'm like, I can't ask them. We're out of time. We're, we're over time now, but we'll save them. We'll save them for next time because it's going to happen. Like we're going to have another monster night. So, uh, so I'll just hang on to it. You guys, uh, ones. Tessa's actually a really awesome fiber artist. She makes like fiber puppet art looking stuff. Uh, oh, cool! T yeah, uh, I, I share. I've been sharing her stuff on Twitter, on my Twitter account, on Spankzilla eighty five. So uh, go check it out. I've been posting her stuff. Go, go, go! See what she's doing. She's got some really cool stuff. So awesome. uh, yeah, um, and okay. we play Gigabash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, yeah, so we better get going because Matt yep. and I both got to get back to work and that macaroni and cheese ain't going to eat itself. I'm just saying. So, um, before we go, I want to remind you all of this, the Sundering, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Join us. There will be stuff. Uh, Hannibal's going to be there. I, I actually added it to the actual banner for the, uh, stream itself, but I, uh, forgot to upload the up the updated one so like eh, whatever but i'm telling you i'm telling you it's happening so like i mean Lori's Lori's gonna be there because if i have to go get her and drag her in front of the camera myself no that's she's it's gonna she's she's actually she's actually um kind of was upset that she couldn't be here tonight so she was uh, very yeah. upset but, but shit happens and we get it and we made a good show anyway. I think I had fun. I, I, I had fun. I don't know. You right. had fun. I had fun. I had a lot of so. fun. I always have fun yelling about the three or four subjects I know about. 
So uh, <laughs> I know a lot about like two things. Um, <laughs> no, it was a, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward yeah. to doing more of them. Uh, doing more of them, where we get to talk about the dissect an actual film. Uh, it's tough because uh, I want to keep the stuff varied. I want to keep the tones all different because I I would hate for us to get to a point where it's like, oh, okay, we're watching another Godzilla movie and this mm -hmm. one is just Godzilla versus something else. And I'm trying to make sure that whatever we do, there are like big thematic elements going on that gives us something to talk about. Cause I love that yeah. Lori goes down those rabbit holes and, uh, and uh, it's she really, really fun. does. Doesn't she? Like, I was like, oh, yeah. I thought I was bad. No, she really, she's, she's uh, on it. Yeah, she is. Yep. She is. So, okay. Yay. So okay. yeah, come join us tomorrow, 5 PM Eastern to uh, launch the sundering and uh awesome. then yeah. yeah we'll and we'll let you know as soon as we figure out like as soon as we nail down a hard date for the to uh, reschedule howl we're gonna do that too so we'll let y'all yep. know mm -hmm. and um sean don't forget to it was sean right yeah it was sean don't forget to message us and tell us what you want and where to send it and everybody have a wonderful night yeah you and... guys have fun <laughs> i'm gonna take all my children and go now <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So, good night, everybody. Bye.